I didn't see you guys there. <laughs> well, folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Second Son Woodworks. My name is Caleb. And my sister's laughing at me because she thinks I'm a nerd. But, uh, today... <laughs> today I'm going to be building this bar for Kate's store! <laughs> Stay tuned. My sister and I have always been close. She has been an incredible friend during some of the hardest times, so when she asked me to come and build this bar in her new country store, not only was I thrilled, I was honored. Honored to take part in this new venture in my sister's life. Also, I got to spend some time in this little mountain town. Hope you'll stick around. Alright folks, if you didn't tune into the first part of this series, make sure you check that out now, linked above. But the first step in this second part of the project was to go ahead and clamp down the bar to the first two support beams in a fashion uh, that made sense. Um, and so that I could then stand up the third 4x4 that will go at the end of the bar and it'll actually span up across the entire window and attach to the window casing on the top of the window as well as on the bottom and then as well as at the bottom of the wall where the molding is. I will be doing kerf cuts on this 4x4 like I did on the first two so that I could get some dados that match the window casing and the mold and so that the 4x4 sits into the wall so that when I attach it, uh, it is actually attached to the wall um, as well as the casing. And so you can see here that I'm marking out the areas where I will need to do the different depths of kerf cuts to make the different depths of dados on the back side of the 4x4. I mentioned this in the first episode of this series, but I'll be doing two different depths of these curve cuts, an inch and a half and three quarter inch. The inch and a half will be for the apron of the window that pokes out just a bit farther than the window casing, which will be at three quarter inch. And then you can see here that I am getting ready to do the fourth beam as well. I just essentially place the four by four up against the wall, make sure I have it in the relatively right position that it's level straight and then I mark out the areas where those kerf cuts will need to happen so that then when they are done the beam will fit into or I should say up against the wall almost like a puzzle piece. So after I had the markings on the two 4x4s that will span up to the top of the window I went ahead and took them out to the workbench that I had constructed uh, with these foldable tough built sawhorses which I would definitely recommend they're the best ones that I have purchased thus far and then I guess use a piece of plywood and you can see here that I am marking out the areas where I will need to do these kerf cuts now the one of the pieces is going to actually have a really long three-quarter inch dado and so instead of doing kerf cuts for that one, I'm actually just going to use my circular saw uh, to cut the entire 
section, and you'll see how I do that in a second. But before I do any type of cutting, I wanted to make sure that I had the beam marked out really well. You can see there that I have three quarter inch marked out and one and a half inch marked out, um, just so that I have lots of different reference points on these two different beams before I start to cut, so that I don't cut anything that I'm not supposed to cut. That happened earlier on in the project, and it was a waste of wood. I don't want that to happen again. After that I went ahead and pulled out my circular saw and I set it to 3 quarter inch depth so that I could begin doing the first cuts. I mentioned this in the first episode of this series but doing curve cuts like this is a great option if you only have a circular saw which I only had a circular saw for this project when I was traveling back to Montana for the holidays. I couldn't bring my table saw or my miter saw because I didn't have enough space in my truck. So. Uh, using curve cuts is a great option. Essentially you just do lots of passes with a circular saw at a certain depth and then you use a chisel to break out the uh, material that is left over and it should break out well if you do the cuts pretty close together. And like I mentioned one of the pieces is going to have a really long area that will have the three-quarter inch uh, depth cut. So instead of doing curve cuts, I actually just use the circular saw and you can see here that I flipped the beam over on its side and then I started the cut and just did a freehand cut down the side uh, of the 4x4 to get it started. This is a bit of a dangerous process but uh, the 4x4 has a good amount of weight to it so I wasn't too concerned um, and I just made sure to take my time. Um, and I did one side and then I flipped the beam over and did the other side and then eventually I had the entire piece um, cut out instead of doing you know 100 curve cuts I was able to do it in a couple passes uh, down the length of the beam. The first two cuts that I did down the length of the beam I had the saw set at 3 quarter inch depth but then I went ahead and increased the depth of the circular saw for this last cut that you can see here. I'm getting that last bit of material cut in the very middle of the 4x4. So by far the biggest problem that I had in the project, this project, the bar at my sister's store was the batteries on my DeWalt tools. When I came up here I had four batteries, two of which came with the set when I originally purchased it back in 2014 or 15. Um, and those two just completely died. They just, they wouldn't even work anymore at the end of the project. I would plug them in, the charger would say it was full after a couple minutes, and then I'd try to use it with the saw or the drill, and it would work for almost like a split second, and then it wouldn't work. So, biggest problem by far, but I ended up buying two additional batteries. I found a sweet deal at the Lowe's. Um, I checked around actually before I purchased it to find the best deal in town. And I found a pack of two larger sized DeWalt batteries. I think they had the six, the number six for the power. Um, I think it's AH, that's like the power level. If you check on the side of those DeWalt batteries, they have different power levels. The ones that they sell, with the tool kits where you get like a drill and a compact drill and a circular saw and a reciprocating saw and blah 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 they usually give you really bad batteries they give you the cheap batteries but you can go and pick up better batteries like this battery that is on the circular saw well now it's not anymore because I plugged it in um, but it had like a 6AH which is way better than the 1.5 that was uh, on the two batteries that I originally purchased back in 2014 Maybe it was 2015. As a result of these battery issues, I had to switch back and forth between using battery powered tools and non battery powered tools so that I could let the batteries charge. So you can see here that I'm doing a bit of the sanding uh, before I think I had drilled all of the holes. Um, but yeah, this happened a lot during this project, which I guess could have been worse. Always could be worse. It was quite important to pre-drill the holes into these 4x4 
uh, stretchers or beams or whatever you want to call them that will be mounted to the wall uh, because not only did I want the uh, pre pre drilled hole to go all the way through so that the bolt the lug nut bolt could go through the beam but also I wanted the lug nut bolt to sit into the beam itself and so I use a Forstner bit for the uh, outside and then a smaller bit to drill all the way through so that the uh, washer and then the head of the nut can actually sit down into the 4x4. Forgot to say this earlier on in the project video but if you are new to Second Sun Woodworks thanks for dropping by. Um, this is my channel my name is Caleb I like to make videos and of projects that I'm doing such as this project which is the bar at my sister's new country store up in the mountains in Montana. She needed some help installing uh, a new coffee bar, something that people could come and sit and talk to her uh, and so I made a video on it. That's kind of usually how all the videos happen on Second Sun Woodworks. It's something that I'm already going to do so I decided to just film it. Um, so thanks for stopping by. Make sure to go and check out my library. After that I went ahead and cut off the ends at a 45 degree angle for the top portion of these two beams. This is just to kind of add a decorative element. You can set your saw at a 45 degree angle and then I just uh, mark a reference line so that it can be as straight as possible when cutting um, this angle. It can be dangerous so always be safe. I say this a lot but um, I'm not responsible for your use of these tools, but uh, you should be safe. Try to be safe. I try to be safe. I don't want to lose a finger. I said that in the last episode, but be safe. Be safe. After that, it was time to complete the rest of the sanding for these two beams. Um, actually, looks like I still have a few holes to drill. Dang. But then I did a bit more sanding, which I think the reason I kept going back and forth was the battery issue. Freaking batteries. Once that battery was charged up just a bit more, I went ahead and used a Forstner bit to drill the outside portion of those pre-drilled holes, doing three per each of these beams, uh, and then that first section, like I said, is with the Forstner bit. The second section is with just a smaller drill bit to go all the way through. Uh, this makes it look pretty nice up against the wall. Um, it just looks professional. Um, the bolts are exposed, but they make it look kind of industrial, and um, I like that. So. After that, it was time to take two additional pieces of 4x4 and I took these and cut 45 degree angles at each of the ends for the support underneath the bar that goes underneath the section um, that butts up, 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 up against the support beams at a 90 degree angle. These two pieces will be set at a 45 like I said and they'll be the support beams. Um, I had to once again use my circular saw to cut to do these cuts but since my circular saw is not three and a half inches or I can't do a three and a half inch cut I had to cut at each end. I tried to do some of the cutting with a pull saw as I was waiting for those batteries to charge uh, but then you can see here that I'll, I did one pass on each side tried to line it up as best as possible so that I had the cleanest cut Once I had those finished, it was time to do more sanding. Uh, it's a lot easier sanding each of these individual pieces when they are separated. Um, so I'd recommend doing that. But then you can see here that I'm pre-drilling four holes on the back side of these beams to push four separate construction screws through to attach the beam that will go under directly under the bar. Um, and then I rubbed some type on two glue and then I moved on to doing those support beams. Um, you can see there that um, the support beam is just attached with construction screws and some glue as well. 
the sun was going down as I was just finishing up these two beams uh, before taking them inside to attach to the wall. After getting the first beam inside the store, it was time to line it up with the bar and figure out the exact area where I wanted to pre-drill holes into the window casing and the baseboard and the top of the window casing for those lag bolts. Um, you can see I tried to level everything out as best as I could, made it look relatively uh, good, um, and then I used a clamp to attach everything together just so it would stay in place as I kind of started those pre-drilled holes um, for the three different lag bolts and then I went on to attaching them. The baseboard and the window casing in this store is pretty thick so uh, I had to finish pre-drilling those holes and then like I said I went on to using an impact driver to drive those uh, different bolts into the wall and it made a lot of noise. <laughs> Before I fully drilled in any of the three different bolts I made sure that all three of them were started and then I kind of went back and forth between the three as I moved it up uh, in, you know up against the wall where those dado cuts um, had been made and did the same thing with the fourth beam that, but the fourth beam won't have any sort of um, support for the bar. It won't even be connected to the bar. Instead, it will have four floating shelves that you can see here that I'm starting to install. And this is kind of an idea that um, I came up with after having several conversations with my sister when I first got to Montana, and as well as before over text. And we just tried to talk as much as we could about what she envisioned, what she wanted. Um, what you know what she was going to be using the bar for was an important thing to discuss and so this is kind of what we both came up with and pretty stoked about how it turned out um, we had to move one of the shelves I put it at a weird height and it didn't really make sense so we adjusted it later on um, but that wasn't too difficult uh, as I just needed to patch the holes you know and pre-drill read pre-drill some holes for the hardware that um, attaches these little steel shelf brackets or shelf support support uh, pieces that I picked up at the hardware store. For the actual shelves themselves I used some pine that I picked up at the Power Townsend in Helena um, but it's a kind of a nicer pine that's cut into boards that are pretty smooth and um, milled down um, and so they're ready to go right away and so I used uh, two different lengths for the actual shelves themselves the first two on the top are a bit longer than the next two uh, that I added and I made sure to pre-drill holes like I said for this uh, these little brackets I think the plan is for these shelves is that Kate will be using them for plants and whatnot, so that's why I wanted to keep the back side of the shelves open to the window so that sunlight could be let in. And like I mentioned earlier, I offset the uh, shelves so that the two on the top are a bit longer than the two on the bottom. Once the shelves were up, it was time to attach the bar to the actual support beams. And to do this, I pre-drilled uh, a hole, one hole on each of the undersides of the support beams um, where I could drive a couple construction screws or three construction screws into the underside of the slab. Um, and in this way, it'd be easy to take the bar off if I needed to or if Kate needed to in the future. Um, and but yet it will ensure that the bar is secured really well. I wish that I would have had time to do some sort of epoxy top on this slab 
um, but I didn't have time and or the space and the uh, and a place that was warm enough to do epoxy. So instead, I guess used Minwax oil-based polyurethane, and I did two coats. Uh, this is the first coat, and I'm using a foam brush uh, to paint it on, and I guess do the entire uh, bar as well as the support beams and the shelves. The first coat on raw wood like this uh, really will soak up the polyurethane, um, or at least it did in this case. And so then after doing the next coat, I did just a bit of sanding with a high grip paper uh, and then did a another coat. And then here in a bit, I will rub on some oil. Alright folks, I am just about finished up with this bar with the floating shelves and I think that the whole project has turned out super well. I'm very excited with how it came together. This slab was from a local place. I picked it up from a guy up in the mountains, kind of close to here. Um, this was several years ago, but it's a piece of wood that uh, is native to the area, which I think is pretty fun. Um, as well as I used just some other 2 by or 4 by 4s and everything turned out well. I'm um, pretty, pretty excited about it and I hope that you've enjoyed the video thus far. Before I pass it off to my sister for use with the bar, uh, I want to rub in some oil to give it just a uh, finished touch. Um, I've done two coats of polyurethane and usually after I do that I'll do a, uh, a coat of paste wax, Johnson's paste wax, and I'll use a steel wool to rub it into the wood, but forgot the paste wax down in California, unfortunately. That's one thing that I forgot, and I think I had intended to buy some more up here in Montana, but um, I didn't do that when I was at the hardware store last, and, and it's 30 minutes to town, so I planned to do this today. So instead, what I'm going to use is some coconut oil. My sister loves coconut oil. She's got it all over the place. Um, and from what I've read on the internet is it can actually help seal wood. The seal wood, you can use it on wood. Um, and so I'm going to try this out and, and uh, just rub it into the wood uh, using steel wool. And then we'll call it good to go. Um, and I'll get you some finished shots. Uh, so let's do it. I was actually pretty happy with how this coconut oil worked. It gave it a nice uh, shimmer uh, using some steel wool to rub it in, finish off the two coats of the polyurethane pretty well. Um, I've yet to talk to my sister more recently to see how the bar is doing, but I will check in with her just to make sure that the finish is holding up. She'll probably have to do another coat of polyurethane at some point. Um, but overall, because I'm not changing the color of the wood, I think this will hold up well over the years. Well folks, we're coming to the end of this series where I build this live edge bar with the floating shelves at my sister's country store uh, up in the mountains in Montana. If you've watched this entire video and the previous video, I want to say thank you very, 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 very much uh, for tuning in to Second Sun Woodworks. And I uh, hope that you've enjoyed this series and this video. And um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, and make sure to check out all of my other videos. And like I always say, get in the shop, build something cool. Take care, folks.